recording. Okay, so that's how uh, we say that a company is growing. Okay, so if you see them um, offering new products, if you see them um, expanding their, their product lines or territories, we can say that the company is um, growing. Now, um, if we see that the company is currently doing the same thing all over again, which that means that the company is actually um, on a stable side. Okay, so uh, it basically just runs as it is. Okay, it doesn't, uh, not really it doesn't, but the, the efforts for growth is minimal, maybe one to two products every month. That's normal. Um, expanding locally, um, that's also normal. Uh, but basically does what it used to be doing. So there's no um, difference on that. But the last one is when the company per, um, sees a declining performance, okay? And it could be various ways. It could be due to competition. It could be due to external factors like the pandemic, okay? So we call it the renewal strategy. Um a short-term renewal strategy to address minor performance problems is called retrenchment. Okay, um, if there are, uh, if it's more of on the major side of uh, uh, renewal, then we call it turnaround. So that would mean cost cutting, um, changing the operations, uh, uh, retrenching of people, and so on. Okay. So you would probably have heard organizations who have uh, done major restructuring and people retrenchment during the pandemic, because that's, of course, that affected the entire performance of the organization. Okay. Now, um, Business Consulting Group developed a matrix that would help organizations um, have an idea of what their performance would be. Uh, what's the performance of their um, initiatives, of their products or their services and see which ones uh, were actually high potential or um, draining the resources of the organization. Okay, so it's what, it's what we call the BCG matrix. Okay, so you can see here on the lower left, um, again, we have different quadrants. Okay, so imagine that like you, imagine you have different projects or events or basically products and services, and it would fall up, uh, among these four different categories. Okay, you could fall on the stars, on the question marks, on the cows, and on the dogs. Okay, so if the if your project is assessed as a dog, that means there is low or the earnings from your from that initiative or project is unstable, and uh, that. It, the impact would be it will give us neutral or negative cash flow. That means that um, the strategy here is to divest from these products or from these projects or initiatives. Okay. Now, if your prod, uh, project, project or product um, or initiatives would fall under cows, that means that the earnings are still high. Um, there's also cash flowing. That means that there's still more growth that we can achieve. Okay, So it's positioned as, at low market growth rate, but the high market share potential. So there's some we still can basically milk uh, from these initiatives. So that's why it's called uh, the milk strategy. Okay, So just continue uh, doing that and... Uh, reap as much earnings and cash as possible from these projects and initiatives. Now, on the other end, we have the question marks. So there is low market share. So the potential isn't really uh, good, okay? But the growth rate is still uh, basically growing, okay? So it's there's still high growth rate. So um, it's still questionable, okay, whether it will be uh, it will fall under the dog strategy or it would actually be improved into a star. So these are where, um, you know, we don't see any more potential, but still we're still earning from this. So it's kind of uh, we're hanging by a thread on these projects. So we need to analyze and understand more 
of what's going on in these um, projects. Okay, and of course we have those that has uh, that have high market share and high growth rate, meaning uh, there's still so much potential. Okay, but also the um, the uh, the 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 growth rate is also high. Okay, and that means that uh, we can still invest more so that it could keep growing. Okay, so these are the four different projects uh, that companies could would use. And even on your student organizations, if you would uh, if you would apply for uh, some some strategic positions in the future, then you might you can actually even use uh, this matrix to see how your projects fare for uh, for the organization. Okay, so if your if you if you assess that your projects are dogs, make, uh, maybe you need to say goodbye to these projects. If your projects are at milk, meaning uh, the growth rate is low, so there's still potential, but but the market share is high, so there's still potential for um, faster growth rate in the future. Then just continue milking these uh, these initiatives. Okay, if it's a star, continue investing. And if it's a question mark, make sure to move these projects either to a star or to a dog. Okay. Um, any questions so far? All right. No questions. Okay. If you have any question. Um, feel free to use the microphone or use direct message functionality or just type it on chat in public. Okay, so now let's move on to the next one. Okay, now let's talk about competitive advantage. So earlier we talked about competitive strategy. Okay, so what will be the direction how to, on how to basically box out our competitors? Now, in order to do that, you need to identify what's really your advantage against your competitors. Okay, so it's a significant or ideally long-term benefit to a company over its competition. Okay, and can result in higher quality products, better customer service, and lower costs. Okay, so you, you could you could just think about our telco services and which and how they perform uh, on various aspects of their business. Okay, what do you think? Would be their competitive advantage. Okay, so let's say if you talk about PLDT versus Globe, what's the competitive advantage? What's their competitive advantage when it comes to Wi-Fi and internet and compared with Converge, let's say. So you can see how these companies are actually trying to win uh, against each other. Okay, uh, so that's what, that's how competitive advantage would look like. Okay. And for some companies, they would use information systems to actually um, gain that competitive advantage. Okay. So for example, we have Gillette, which is actually a shaving products uh, company. Okay. They use uh, information systems to produce high quality products at low cost okay. using manufacturing systems uh, to, do, to produce these um, shaving products. They also have Walgreens uh, with the drug and convenience stores. They use information systems to develop satellite communication systems to link local stores to comp centralized computer systems. So basically, we, uh, we, they have various systems, or I suppose these were POS systems or point of sale systems, and make sure to connect all of them to the headquarters for uh, faster um, collection of, of uh, sales data. Okay. Now we also have Wells Fargo, which is it's a bank or financial services company. They use information systems to uh, increase customer service and to have 24-hour banking for their customers. So it actually improves their customer service um, with the application of information systems. Okay, So that's how they could actually um, use technology or information systems in order to uh, gain competitive advantage against their competitors. So maybe uh, just... To practice thinking about competitive advantage, look at your favorite brand. Okay, let's say if we go back to the RAM example, uh, go to your RAM, uh, observe your uh, favorite RAM and brand, RAM and shop, 
see their competitors and identify what really makes them great. Okay, um, you you might identify uh, this this company A, this ramen shop A is good in terms of ambience. This company B actually has um, I don't know, let's say has some uh, technology going on with the ramen. So they were they have some uh, some tactics going on to make sure to impress the customers and so on. Okay, so you would you would see how they're trying to be, how they're trying to advantage make advantage of these um, uh, of these uh, features or functionalities right so now it, when it comes to competitive advantage there are different ways to um, to assess that okay and one framework that is usually used is what we call the of uh, uh, Porter's five forces model. Okay, so we actually have uh, threat of new entrants, the threat of substitute products and services, bargaining power of customers, and bargaining power of suppliers. And all of these affect the overall rivalry. Okay, so what are these things? Okay, so we have here the five forces model. Okay, so you can see we have we have the the threat of new entry or how easy it is for uh, organizations to to join the competition basically okay so is the industry very um uh very technical that it that before one can even start they have to invest on a lot of technology products okay so for some incumbent players they try to keep out newcomers in so many ways often using uh in information systems okay so uh, they would have higher higher volumes that could mean lower costs per unit of production when we talk about manufacturing. Um, a large customer base can be significant because of network effects, okay, which can also increase the value of a product or service. Okay, so if um, if most of the market share has been captured already, then it's also difficult uh, to uh, to enter that industry. Unless you know, it, unless you're do, you're you're doing something wrong during that within that industry, okay. So again, uh, we we can see how information systems are used, okay, or at least we we say that information systems are used to to uh of, to keep the newcomers out of the competition, okay. We can also look at the network effects of a large customer base. For example, the value of Facebook is we can say it's low if you can only connect to a few people, okay? But then if you use it to leverage on a wider network, a social network, basically, the more valuable the system becomes, okay? Or another example involves mobile phone carriers that uh, use these network effects by offering free calling to any mobile phones on the same network, okay? So the unlimited uh, pro uh, Unlimited offerings, right? So they, they say that uh, it, you would you can get unlimited calls and texts for globe to globe. So they're actually building your network with other uh, with other customers within the same network. Okay, so the, the carriers would hope that you will persuade your family and friends to go into the same carrier and basically making um, making them more um, profit or margin. Okay, now. Uh, the incumbents can also devise strategies when it comes to switching costs. Okay, so uh, this is how uh, contracts are being done. Okay, so you would see um, you would see telcos basically put you on a two-year contract before you could even move out of the contract or move to a different network. Okay, so. Um, its costs are already within those monthly fees and uh, over the life of contract and termination fees uh, recapture any remaining costs okay in, if in case you decide to stop uh, availing the service uh, within that two-year contract okay loyalty programs are another example frequent flyer rewards uh, providing you with uh, automatic upgrades free companion tickets so that basically you are stick you are stuck with that company, okay? If in case you have already quote unquote invested so much within that company, okay? So that's the threat of new entry. Now, when it comes to buyer power, this is 
where we see how actually the buyers of your services and products can affect your um your services okay so uh the buyer the power of buyers okay increases when they have leverage uh, uh and can demand deep discounts and services okay so for example if if there's a lot of competition or there's a lot of players in the industry then players would uh buyers would actually have more leverage when it comes to pricing okay so they could easily switch uh to another company if if they feel that uh your services aren't enough already and someone has come up with a new um strategy or new let's say customer service initiatives okay so if a, if uh if you have a small number of buyers, okay, then you are actually at a disadvantage because losing one could be um, detrimental for your um, organization. Okay, so but then if you have higher, uh, more buyers, right? So they can easily they can um, you could you could you could also put it in a way that when there when you have a lot of customers you could, that 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 somehow decreases the buyer power as well okay so there's a uh, potential for more customer growth in this area okay so the balance of power between uh, buyers and suppliers for many industries okay has shifted dramatically when markets went online and this provided the opportunity for customers to easily switch from one seller to another okay so um unless they have something tied to them like a loyalty program okay um i without without these marketing efforts uh, or customer attention activities then it would is customers could easily go from one uh company to another okay now the other one is supplier power how your suppliers can affect your um pricing and costing okay so if you are dependent on very few suppliers. That means that you have um, less chance to negotiate. Okay? You would have to rely on their own uh, price. They can dictate the pricing to you. Okay, so for example, if I am a company that uh, that that procures um, hygiene products, if I'm only buying on from one. Um, from one supplier, then only then he that's that that supplier can can dictate my pricing. Okay, so but so what I need to do is to expand my number of suppliers. I have to look for other suppliers to and so, so that I can compare the pricing, reducing their power and putting it putting more control on my end as the company. Okay, so you can see it that way from a very simplistic uh, point of view. So IT or information systems can be used to impose switching costs that would increase supplier power. Okay, so for example, um, back in the day when you purchase songs in I from iTunes, that they would only play on iPod. Okay, uh, if you remember the iPod days, okay, uh, and these iPod would only play songs in in the in that format in that Apple specific iOS specific format. So those who have bought these iPods, okay. Um, they have technically a little, very little choice, but to buy from Apple Music or uh, Apple Store, okay. And uh, the cost of switching to a different music player would be very high for you if you had, if you already had large collection in iTunes, okay. So, uh, good old days, iPod and iTunes. Um, lastly, the substitution, okay. So we're talking about, we talk about the newcomers in the industry we talk about the your customers uh we talk about how suppliers can also influence your costing now we, let's talk about the rest of the um players in the industry okay i realized i was even i wasn't uh shifting the slides okay so now when it comes to threat of substitute substitutes okay it can be high when there are a lot of alternative products Okay, so especially if they also offer attractive savings. Uh, for example, if in one place there are um, bar, they, there are different uh, food shops, then people could, you could just imagine a, a food court where um, there are a lot of uh, food establishments placed within each, within each other, which actually increases the threat of being substituted. 
Okay. Um, also, for example, with the rising fuel costs and tighter travel budgets, or even the pandemic, okay, we can see that video conferencing has become a, an attractive substitute for business travel. So most of the business meetings are now being moved to virtual meetings and even that's just like what you're seeing today. So face-to-face uh, -face classes have been substituted by um, online learning. Okay? Not really because of competition, but we can still see that it's a substitute uh, with, uh, if in case we go back to the normal setup. Okay? Um, information technology okay, or information systems plays a key role uh, because of uh, because we can come up with digital substitutes of these services and products. Okay, so again, online learning modules that could replace face-to-face -face classes. Okay, whether it's effective or not to some. Okay, that's not a question. But what the point is that you know uh, the technology is now able to uh, replicate or these services in a digital manner. Okay, and be able and put itself as a substitute okay, to that uh, to that service or product. Okay, so these threats may come from any direction, um, making it critical for strategists to pay attention to developments on a much wider scale. Okay, so for example, when the newspaper industry failed to grasp how quickly subscribers would switch to the free news available online um, to save both money and trees, uh, that so. With that, again, the digital age, it has put the control uh, to uh, back to the customers or to the to the consumers. Okay, uh, that's a lot of things mentioned, but just remember you have these four affecting the internal competitive competition. Okay, if it's easy to come in at uh, the industry play, if there are a lot of customers or a few customers in this market, if there are if you can seek a lot more uh, suppliers or not, and if you have a lot of players already playing within the market. Okay, so newcomers um, within the industry, customer power and supplier power. All of these can affect your competition strategy, competitive strategy. Okay, now. When choosing a strategy, you could play it from a costing perspective, meaning you will have, uh, you have the lowest costs in the industry. You have, you have, you ha you have very efficient production, uh, simpler designs, lower input costs, maybe because of the optimization done by information systems. Okay, or at the same time, you can also differentiate yourselves uh, ag against your competitors. You put up high quality products. Um, you come up with extraordinary service, business class, these things are VIP lanes, innovative design, and technology capability. All of these are also placed to make sure that you are differentiated against your competitors. Okay, so both of them actually uh, address or um, affect your competitive advantage. Okay, now you could also think um, of the question, what sets Apple apart from Samsung? And people would have different uh, responses to this. Okay, uh, some people would rely on Apple on its simplicity. Simply, uh, sim it's very simple to use. It's very uh, in intuitive. Uh, all the software and applications are very easy to access to navigate. Whereas to Samsung, people have a lot more or Android phones in general, people have a lot more control into what's going on on their phones, okay? So they could tweak some of the things that are already simplified on the Apple side, okay? Uh, but some uh, Apple enthusiasts would see this as uh, additional activities to think of instead of just using the product. So, you know, these two things can actually um, uh, affect your differentiation strategy, okay? Now, the third one is about focus strategy, which involves cost advantage or differentiation advantage, but more on a narrow segment or a narrower scale. Okay. Um, other ways to, uh, to be competitive is to join a strategic alliance. Okay. So uh, it's agreement between two or more companies that involves joint production and distribution of goods and services. Like, for example, when uh, Grab and Unilever uh, uh, 
went into joint venture or joint uh, initiatives during the pandemic so that uh, Unilever would have another an alternative logistics partner that can work with local uh, and small areas within the Southeast Asia. Uh, at the same time, Unilever provides Grab um, hygiene products so that they can, uh, so that Grab would have, you know, a, a, comp- a competitive advantage or at least a, a differentiation compared to the local services. Okay, so they would have the like, Grab drivers could now uh, come up with uh, marketing campaigns like we make sure our drivers were hygienic because of these hygiene products from from Unilever. Okay, so again, so joint venture, Unilever uses them to, to, to get localized logistics capabilities. At the same time, Grab uses Unilever, not really uses leverages and Unilever's hygiene products to come up with, the, with uh, a very effective marketing campaign, especially during the pandemic. Okay, um, another one is when uh, consumer products companies or uh, retailers like Jollibee uh, uh, partners with bigger retailers, especially during the pandemic, so that they can still push their products into these establishments that were seen more, more essential than uh, than quick service restaurants like Jollibee's. Okay, so they have pushed their products into these retailers so that customers can still have access to their products. Okay, now that's. That strategic alliance, so you can see companies partnering uh, with each other. So when it comes to airlines, you would see um, airlines uh, that are that belong to a group, so that you could you could earn points uh, even when flying from these different uh, airlines. So Singapore Airlines and Thai Airlines are under the same group. So whether you fly either, okay, you would earn the same points, and you could get you could avail of their um, upgrades and tickets uh, across these dif- across these different airlines okay now the next one is creating new products and services periodically or frequently okay so you've know you know this every year um, iPhone uh, Apple and Samsung releases their new phones iPhone 13 was just being released so it's also a strategy so that people could keep on buying basically so they try to keep, they try to create new products and services and uh uh to to attract the customers to, you know to to get more of their products because they would have more functionalities they would have more advan- uh, advan- advancements from the previous models okay so it might you might you might encounter that you have just bought a product but then since these companies keep on producing new products, then you uh, you would have that slight um, guilt on your end that you would now want to buy a new one. You would want to buy that new product because of the uh, new technologies that are embedded in. Okay, so for those who are familiar with the graphics cards, okay, so you people have just bought the this specific version of graphics card until uh, they. They suddenly released, not really suddenly, but until they released the new products. So people have now become more um, interested on in the new products compared to the previous product. Okay, so there were also some, some, uh, I would say, so jokes regarding this, uh, where people can now buy more iPhones because it will the pricing of the older iPhone models will go down because of the release of iPhone 13. So something like that. It might be a joke, but there's a reality behind it. Okay, so that's what's going on with creating new products and services strategy. Okay, other strategies. So you, of course, you would want to improve existing product lines and services. Okay, or whoever launches their product first into the market, uh, that would they would have access to the market first and could gain more control rather than the second and third players. Um, having personalized personalization, so make let's say those uh, bags that offer printing of initials, uh, or or, or um, shoes that that allows personalization of let's say laces or color of soles. Um, those things can be also a strategy to become more competitive. Or lastly, basically hiring the best people, so they could easily brag that we 
uh, hire the top X percentage of the industry uh, in this company. So you, that would that also um, serves their branding. Okay, that's too much content for today. Okay, um, any questions so far before we wrap up this session? None, sir. Okay, none for now. Okay, that's so much content. Okay, there's too much frameworks. So what I want you to do is at least by group to run through these frameworks. Okay, you could also look at look at other resources online. Um, I haven't uploaded, I haven't posted yet the video from last session, but I already uploaded on YouTube. So I just have to um post it on Canvas. But I will also um, post this lecture on Canvas together with the previous lecture. Okay, so let me just stop the recording.